Hey guys, I'm back for another video, and today I'm actually doing a video on a Hytale blog post. It's been a long time since I did one of these, if you guys remember the last time I did a video about a blog post was actually the animation and model making uh, thing, which was quite a while ago. And the reason why I'm getting back on that train today is because the blog post that came out this past Thursday has been a game changer. It's actually something that's like game mechanics related that, you know, we get to see some code, we get to see how the modders get to make new stuff, and oh boy am I excited. I'm not going to just straight up read the blog post because, you know, you guys can do that in your own time. Today I'm going to be talking about the implications of being able to use these JSON files to interact with scripts and mods to create very in-depth custom experiences in this game. So we only have like two screenshots with actual code in them. What I could gather is that you can create things such as groups, which of course would encompass certain mobs. So in the example, they gave us target groups and then in there it says Chork. So a Chork is a group of mobs. I would imagine you could have other groups that could be defined, for example, Bat, or pig, or maybe you can have a more broad group. Maybe it would be mammals. <laughs> so then all different, you know, chorks and humans and bats could all be in one group. I would imagine you could probably set that on your own. I've also noticed that there's such a thing as a beacon effect, which basically notifies nearby members of a specified group of something. A beacon effect is given a message and of course, this is also custom. You can input whatever message you like, and I would imagine later, depending on what the message is, you can run some sort of a script. Also, this is where you finally see the link between the animation software and the game itself. This is part of that process. So a lot of people are saying that this is the scripting of Hytale, but it's not. <laughs> if you look in the initial launch trailer, that is clearly JavaScript. And I confirmed this later with Simon, you know, by asking him on Twitter. So what we're looking at now is an intermediate step between the animation, the scripting, and then there's this, the JSON, and then there's the game. So I would imagine that a lot of stuff will be built into Hytale such that you can write these JSON files without writing any actual code, which is convenient, but I feel like you can also use this system to call your own custom scripts. This way you can have more complicated behaviors that require things like problem solving and random numbers and, you know, if statements and things like that. So this is like a little, it's a bridge basically between scripting and the game itself, which I think is really cool. I actually didn't think this was necessary at first, but looking at it, it looks like a great way to organize it. Because writing a script for every little action, you know, like every other game, would be kind of tedious. I mean, I was willing to do it. That's what I thought I was going to have to do. But, you know, seeing something like this makes it a lot easier. And it's more friendly for people that don't know how to code. I mean, not everyone knows how to, you know, do JavaScript and Java right off the bat. So another thing I noticed is that mobs have what's called a state. This is actually really topical for me because way back in the day, I developed my own game called the RP Games Engine. And I had what was called a game state. And in my case, a game state was, you know, playing, so you're playing the game, or inventory, you're opening the inventory. Another game state could be world editor mode, so maybe creative mode could be a game state. Of course, that's the way I defined it. The way Hytale defines it could be completely different, but if you look, it shows that the state is idle until a uh, selector happens, it gets within range of a bear, and then it fist bumps the air in front of it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so I would imagine in this context that something like a state, you know, idle. So you'd have idle, then you'd have alerted, then you'd have maybe angry, and then you'd have um, attacking. Another state could be sleeping, as shown in that other gif of the chork getting up after <laughs> rain starts while he's out. I find that hilarious, by the way, that he's just out there trying to sleep. And then it starts raining, he's like, ah, I'm gonna get underneath some shelter. Another thing I notice is the timeout, which is shown at the bottom, and it suggests that it would take time for the mob to no longer be in that state of alert or looking for something. So it would expire over time. 
Which also brings up an interesting thought that I bet you that timeout is something that was defined outside of the game's base code. I'm pretty sure that in that instance, timeout is actually defined somewhere else, whether it be a script or another JSON. This lets me know that you can create brand new concepts on your own. You don't need to think in such a way, it's like, oh, cool, Chorks can get up out of the rain and go to fire. No, it's much deeper than that. You can create your own game mechanics, like at the basic level. Using this as a starting point, right? What if I wanted to add a stealth system similar to Skyrim? We all know Skyrim, how an NPC, if you were spotted, they would become alerted, which is already a thing, apparently, if you look in, you know, Hightail. But then what if you attack one, they're angry, they're searching for you, then you go and hide. Maybe it would expire, right? They'd still be searching for you, but they won't know where you are. And then eventually they'd give up and no longer be hostile. And what if you had another system where if you were not only in a radius, but you were outside their cone of vision and you weren't making a lot of noise, then you could sneak attack them. And if their game state, for example, right, is idle and they don't know you're there, then it would do extra damage, something like that. And of course, upon dying, maybe it would send out a beacon effect to nearby Chorks. Hey, this thing just died and it probably made a lot of noise and then they would get alerted and look and see how their friend died or got attacked. So using this system without even writing any actual code, and even if you do have to write code, it's JavaScript. It's like really pretty simple, but like just writing a few lines of code, you can create game mechanics that are more complex than those found in other games like Skyrim. Uh, you can probably create super intelligent mobs that have reactions to a whole bunch of common scenarios. And again, with JavaScript and maybe even Java, you can code them to be, to have problem solving skills, to actually make decisions like uh, differently each time. So there's not a specific response to everything. Maybe they could find new situations and react accordingly. Some other things that I was thinking of, just, you know, my gut reaction to seeing this, I would imagine it'd be cool seeing something like bats being alerted to your presence and then they would scare other bats by, you know, being triggered and they all fly out in that stereotypical way. How they all just like in a swarm fly out of the cave. Or you'd have a traveling merchant maybe that gets attacked and is you know, initial reaction would be to run away. Or you can have something like a companion, maybe a dog. And if it realizes, hey, the player's hurt, I'm going to go and bring him some healing supplies or something. And maybe if you were un knocked unconscious, it would try to drag you underneath some shelter. And you could do all of this using this JSON file system along with scripting. I want to make it clear that I'm pretty sure for some more complicated tasks you are going to need to teach yourself JavaScript, which I don't think is a bad thing, honestly, because you know, there's only so much you can do with a bunch of strings and numbers. You're going to need some if statements in there and loops, <laughs> things like that. Well, anyway, leave a like down below if you enjoyed this video and honestly, I am so hyped. I'm really happy to see another game mechanics post that actually gets into some code because, you know, I actually do this for a living so I could read that and actually understand what's happening. So I'm excited. I hope you're excited. And once this game launches, oh man, I am going to go nuts. Probably the first thing I'm going to do is actually implement a, a zombies like game mode, probably using these mechanics. <laughs> and it will it will be amazing. If you'd like to continue the Hightail discussion, then you should follow me on Twitter. I post a lot of interesting stuff in there, including progress updates for my very own Hightail project, Blockshot. It's pretty crazy. I retweet a lot of the stuff from that Twitter as well. There's two of them. There's the 30 virus Twitter and the Blockshot Twitter. You should follow both. It's a good time. Well, anyway, that's it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.